Um, about a year ago, I found out about this really amazing group um, that uh, works in rural India, and they use theater to change society. The group is called Jana Sanskriti, which is Bengali for people's culture. Basically, Jana Sanskriti um, blurs the line between theater and reality by inviting ordinary people to act on stage and then translate their actions into concrete change in their everyday lives. So I wanted to know more about Jana Sanskriti, so I went to West Bengal where they were having a festival that brought people from 15 different countries to do theater workshops together and perform on stage in pieces of forum theater. Now a typical forum theater play is short, lasting only about 10 or 20 minutes. The plays feature a person who faces some sort of struggle that cannot be overcome, and the outcome of the play is the oppression of that person. In short, the actors present a problem, but no solution. Then a facilitator appears on stage and asks the audience if they recognize this character and their situation, and if they see any alternatives to the course of action that the person took. Is there anything that this person might have done to change the outcome of their situation? Hands go up in the audience, and a spectator comes on stage. The spectator has the actors rewind the action to the point where they see a possible change. And then the spectator takes the place of the main character. In this moment, the spectator transforms from being a spectator to an actor, or in other words, a spect actor. So this is the forum of forum theater. One person after another, stepping out of the audience and onto the stage, trying out different things theatrically, trying to break the cycle of oppression in the story. It's a method that's used all over the world as part of a larger family of theatrical techniques called theater of the oppressed. Now, forum theater is a perfect fit in rural India. In an Indian village, folk theater is at the center of the community. The stage is at ground level, and the audience surrounds it. Indian folk theater also already has a facilitator character whose role is to comment on the drama. And uh, this transforms directly to the aspect of the forum. Um, in Indian theater, there is little distinction between acting, singing, and dancing. To have theater without these elements would hardly be theater at all. Here in the West, we are exposed to this through the mass marketing of Bollywood films, which you might be familiar with. Um, but even Bollywood has its roots in folk and classical theater. What this means for Jonathan Scritti is that they produce political plays, which include songs and dances, and also symbolic elements that effectively convey what's happening without the use of words. The plays do utilize a lot of dialogue, but you don't need to understand Bengali to understand what's going on. When Jana Sanskriti comes to a village, thousands of people may turn out to see a performance. They come for the entertainment, but also for the participatory aspects and the political discourse that foreign theater creates. It's also an opportunity to see friends and family members get on stage and act out their desires towards solving society's problems. Jana Sanskriti begins each play with a song, followed by a Gujarati stick dance called Dandi Aras, which is pictured in the panels on the left of this slide. Um, the themes of the plays themselves are determined by the villagers who enact them and represent issues facing the communities that they come from. One major theme in the plays is gender and patriarchy. Most women in rural India are forced to marry at a very young age, whereby they become the property of their husbands. It is generally considered acceptable for a man to beat his wife, and many people do not even consider this to be a form of oppression. A woman without a husband is regarded as a whore, and widows are shunned from society. Jana Sanskriti has made several plays that address this inequity between women and men. During the forum, women come on stage, and in village society it is generally considered taboo for women to appear in front of a crowd of people, let alone act. On stage, they confront the actors who play their oppressors, while it is very likely that their real oppressors are watching from the audience. Men also come on stage, usually portraying themselves as benign and non-oppressive. Now, because they are performing in front of all their neighbors, these spect actors are held accountable for their behavior on stage and expected to live up to these standards off stage as well. Now, through a pl though a play only lasts about 20 minutes, the forum may continue for one or two hours. Then the Jana Sanskriti team moves to another village where they perform the play with another community. The team tours like this for a few weeks at a time. 
And within a month, the Jana Sanskriti team returns to every village they visited and performs the same play again. In that time, the people have had opportunity to discuss it and come up with new strategies to try out in the forum, which they do, and the results are always more effective than they were the first time. Moreover, spectators implement these strategies in real life. A woman who stands up to her husband on stage is applauded and supported by her community and is also more likely to have the power and support in daily life against her real husband. And the topics brought up in the forum, which were once part of an unquestioned system of oppression, are now discussed openly. In this way, Jana Sanskriti has, over two decades of work, changed aspects of their society. But our society is different. Here in Philadelphia, we have a different sense of community. We share common sets of oppressions with people the world over but they manifest themselves in different ways. So here's my question. What does Jana Sanskriti have to teach us? How does their work against sexism, alcoholism, corruption, and corporate globalization in rural India translate to urban North America? I travel to the other side of the world to learn with them. But what do I do with this knowledge? It's an interesting question to be asking here at Studio 34 where hundreds of people come each week to improve their lives through doing yoga, a physical, mental, and spiritual practice that originally came from India. Thank you.